Good morning, YouTube. Home Theater Joe here with your LG C10 3.23.25 firmware update. Bug fixes and my final results. There is an awful lot of information to pour through here, so let's just get into it. We will start right here at support, software update. There you go. Learning curve version 32325. Also, just a quick aside. Total power on time for this display is just over 3,500 hours. It's 3,502. Why do I bring that up? Because if you pay attention to what's going on back there, you will see no image retention. Just saying. Okay, so I am not going to say or go through this entire list of bug fix issues, but believe you me, it's a lot, and I'm going to highlight the ones that I think are worth it. So... The first one we'll go to is HDMI 4, no signal improvement. Now, for whatever reason, I've been seeing this the last two or three updates. HDMI 4 must have some issues. I don't have issues with HDMI 4 on my display, but that's what it is. Improved HDMI, no signal issue in eARC on state. Look, anything ARC, eARC, yeah. Please do something about that because the handshaking issue with my Yamaha, but I'm hoping that that will improve when I send a Yamaha back for the 2.1 board swap. We'll see. Um, this is interesting as well. New model names added. OLED 556575CXFNA. Have no idea what that's about. Must be a new panel line? I, I don't know. Specific eARC equipment works as ARC improvement. I think that's good. They actually have something. This is kind of funny, so I'm just going to read it. Voice mode, output mode, improved lip, lip sync distortion when using the voice recognition button on the Magic Remote Control, improved no video when switching IP channels. Thanks for improving that. <laughs> uh, function correspondence. Here we go. I think a lot of people like this. Improved Apple AirPlay function. Now, I know a lot of people that use AirPlay with their device, so... Um, I don't, I don't know anything about that life, but hopefully it works better. Uh, AMD FreeSync support, and as also noted, only OLED CX and GX supported. Here's something funny, improve sports alerts function. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Improve the issues of icons and text not being displayed properly. Uh. Improved home launch, launcher design. Um, you can listen to TV sound now on your mobile through the ThinQ app. Um, and then we get down to a bunch of improvement of minor issues related to software. Three two one two one three two three one zero three two three one five. But here are a couple of interesting things that I really want to highlight. New NVIDIA GeForce RTX 30 series compatibility issues improved. Very interesting. Right below that, we have HDMI 2.1 compatibility issue improvement. And it goes on to note, improved VRR performance so that there is no interruption in PC and game consoles. Very, very interesting. You see, I believe, because I'm right here on the East Coast of the United States, the North America must be like last in the chain to get these firmware updates. We know from our friend Lock NL over in the Netherlands that they're already running 4K 120 Dolby Vision. Um, also, I have read that LG France says that it will be coming there sometime around September. So I'm going to guess right now, North America, we're about 30 to 90 days away from Dolby Vision 4K 120 gaming. On our C10s, which is pretty cool. So I know it's been a long way, but in my mind, it's, I, I mean, it's actually a, a very good thing because I honestly didn't think that Dolby Vision Gaming at 4, 4K 120 would come to the C10 and G10. We have seen manufacturers, display manufacturers do this, not LG in particular, but we have seen display manufacturers as well as AVR manufacturers sell us products with the promise of future firmware updates to add um, stability or add features, and we just don't get it. 
So it would not have surprised me at all. But once again, LG being true to their word and their connectivity is always very good. So, yeah. Um, one thing to note about 4K gaming and 120 and Dolby Vision is I believe it's going to be at 8 bits. But that's another discussion, another topic. We'll get into that later. Now, let's get to my results. What has happened to my display? And somewhere up on your screen, I'm going to flash a Dolby Vision user display configuration file, which was made from uh, AutoCal. And I did this uh, a few days ago, 8.30.21. Um, and the most important thing to look at here is the Tmax number, which comes in at 668. Now, that Tmax number represents maximum peak lumens, lumens in Dolby Vision Cinema. And I know what you're thinking. Well, that doesn't sound very high. And you'd be correct, because it's not. It's not average for these panels. As a matter of fact, my C10, on average, has been about 100 nits lower than any other C10. From my research, I see the average C10 is anywhere from 700 to 750 nits. Peak brightness on, say, a 10% window. Mine's 668 on a 10% window. But I'm still calling this update good. Number one, no, no new bugs. No, no bad stuff has popped up. And believe you me, I've had some bad updates. Also, the fact that my peak limits didn't drop any further is good for me. You know, I, I LG has definitely dropped my peak limits. And they did it around the whole, the whole C1, G1 rollout debacle. So we know for certain that LG can affect your peak luminance, average luminance, whatever they want to from a firmware update on your display panel. It's one of the reasons I say leave automatic updates off. Now, I would never sit here and tell anyone that they should or should not download a firmware update for their C10. I'm just out here giving you the information, giving, giving you what happened to mine. This is my daily driver. Um, and... Let me, let me go back to the 668 thing for a second. Um, we always talk about, ah, we need 1,000 nits, 1,200 nits, blah, blah, blah. If you're walk, watching in a light-controlled environment, I mean, for instance, when I play video games at night, okay, I switch it from uh, tone mapping on to H gig because it is simply too bright. I mean, it, the image is still accurate, still looks beautiful, but at night I'm like, eh. My point is, 700 nits is plenty bright, especially in the light-controlled room. So, um, I'm just kind of touching on the fact that, oh, they don't get as bright as LCDs. doesn't matter. It's the contrast ratio. that. Well, that's one of the things. But anyway, I think that's where we're at. And what I'm going to... I'm just going to call this one good. Now, I would never say to download or not to download. That's up to y'all. But as for my experience with my panel, it's been good. I don't have any problem with it. So, if you have any questions or comments, please put them down below. They're always appreciated. And I guess now, yeah, we're at that point where uh, we wrap it up. So, as always, thank you for listening. Be good. Be safe.